I reminded them that Florida's own Rick Scott is the guy who ran the Senate Campaign Committee for Republicans last year, had a plan to sunset. Maybe he's changed his mind. Maybe he's seen the Lord. But, <laughs> but he, he wanted a sunset, meaning if you don't reauthorize it, it goes away. I know that a lot of Republicans, their dream is to cut Social Security and Medicare. Well, let me say this. If that's your dream, I'm your nightmare. That was President Biden in Florida yesterday repeating his debunked claims on the Republican agenda, saying that they're trying to sunset Social Security and Medicare. Senator Rick Scott responding on Twitter, writing, quote, since you can't stop talking about me and lying to Floridians about Social Security and Medicare, I'm sure you'll accept my invitation to debate the issue. Joining me now, New York Congressman, House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee member and House Education and the Workforce Committee member, Brandon Williams. Great to see you this morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to get your reaction to you, how, how the president is handling this. So many failed policies on his part, yet he keeps attacking Republicans on Social Security and Medicare when they've said over and over again they are not planning to sunset them. They want to try to reform the system so that it could be uh, you know, have more longevity. Well, I tell you, the president is dreaming. I think we all know that. Um, he's dreaming about uh, ending fossil fuels in 10 years. I literally laughed out loud when he said that on the uh, State of the Union and along with all of my, my colleagues. So um, the fact that he's making up stuff about uh, Social Security and Medicare doesn't surprise me one bit. And you heard the reaction on the floor in real time. There's, there is no one that's uh, committed to doing that. And he's, uh, he has to make things up. And so I hope he wakes up in time uh, before it's too late. Well, I want to switch gears while I have you here because Southwest Airlines Chief Operating Officer Andrew Waterson testifying on Capitol Hill yesterday in front of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, Transportation. Here's what he had to say on the airlines and the holiday meltdown. I want to sincerely and humbly apologize to those impacted by the disruption. We understand that for many, this is perhaps the most important trip they take all year. So why did this happen? Let me be clear, we messed up. Congressman Williams, you're on the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Your reaction and thoughts to this? He's saying we messed up and he's owning it, but I'm still not hearing exactly what Southwest is going to do to try to uh, you know, prevent this from happening in the future. You know, the airline industry has gone through a very tough uh, couple of years where there was no demand because of COVID, uh, massive layoffs. And then when the spigot got turned back on, uh, it was turned on full blast. Everybody wanted to go all at once. Uh, I was on uh, one of the flights when they said that the mask mandate, uh, you know, had been lifted or was no longer required and people cheered out loud. And so uh, there's certainly a difficult time. You know, if you look back, you know, remember the winter storm that uh, hurt, uh, I think it was JetBlue Airlines, and it really revealed some of their um, operational issues. They owned it. They stood up and really um, addressed those issues and uh, turned those things around. I think Southwest is at that same moment. It's a great company. They have a great history of service. But, um, you know, after two years of probably underinvesting in their operations, mm -hmm. they're now overwhelmed and it's just pretty clear they got caught short. So, yeah. you know, I'm optimistic they'll turn it around, but they should be listening to their people. It, it hit a tipping point. All right. We'll be watching to see what happens from here. Um, something else I wanted to ask you about Hunter Biden's lawyers rejecting the House Oversight Committee's request for any records related to foreign business deals made by Hunter and the president's brother, James Biden. Hunter's attorney writing in a letter, quote, peddling your own inaccurate, inaccurate and baseless conclusions under the guise of a real investigation turns the committee into wonderland and you into the queen of hearts shouting sentence first verdict afterwards. Uh, Congressman Williams, I, I want to get your thoughts on this because most people that I speak to legit, you know, legitimately will say if Hunter Biden has nothing to hide, why not just turn over, turn over the documents? <laughs> well, I have to tell you, that's a beautiful alliteration. Uh, he's well down the rabbit hole there um, in the <laughs> wonderland. Uh, so it's no, no question that he's, um, if you know anything about uh, the author uh, of that book, uh, who also, I think, had a very strong hallucinogenic uh, drug problem. <laughs> so uh, Hunter's going to be facing some very tough uh, uh, questioning, and it, I, I think it echoes back to his dad's comments about dreams and nightmares. I, I think he's in a nightmare, and um, 
it's just started. Congressman Brandon Williams, great to see you this morning. Uh, a lot of good points made today. Thank you.